Hi everyone, so let's talk about uh, applying trend to uh, electron affinity energy. Electron affinity is the energy that accompanies the following process. And that process is the addition of an electron to an atom in the gas phase to produce an anion. You can write generally the equation for electron affinity as the following. You have an atom and then you add electron to it, so then what you get is the anion form of the element, okay? And it, you can think of this almost exactly the opposite, like ionization energy, okay? You have an atom here, and then you start adding electrons. With ionization energy, remember what you have is you have an atom, you start pulling the electron away, okay? What happens with electron affinities is that they tend to be negative. So in other words, electron affinity tend to be an exothermic process. So delta H for this process tends to be negative. This is just what's observed experimentally. The trend itself is shown in the following plot. So here's a plot for the trend in electron affinity energy. I want to remind you that electron affinity is usually negative, right? And this makes the interpretation sometimes a little difficult, but if you keep in mind that it's usually tend to be negative, then it should help you understand it better. So remember that, don't forget that the more negative energy means more stable um, system, right? So that's, that's what we've been talking about since the thermodynamics chapter. So let's go back to the electron affinity. We can look at the trend carefully in uh, two ways. Again, first, is, uh, first you want to look across a period from left to right, and then secondly you want to look at as you go down a group, right, from top to bottom. If you look across a period, let's say if you're looking at the period uh, three elements, okay, or I'm sorry, period two elements, which starts from lithium until ends in fluorine, you see that the electron affinity is has this specific pattern right here and you can look at the third period it has that same exact pattern so you go from sodium which starts from here so it goes up like that and then potassium this is the third uh, the next uh, period over so you see generally you see a pattern that goes that way okay as you go from uh, the beginning of the period to the end of the period okay from you go from left to right no, but you want to be a little careful. The axis here, if you look at the y-axis here, it's electron affinity, but it's expressed as 0 at this value, and then it goes negative 50, and then negative 100, and then negative 150, 200, 250. So in other words, as you go up, you actually get more negative values. So in other words, the trend, if you write it down, should be across a period the electron affinity energy is actually more negative so what's that mean again this process for electron affinity that's measured by the electron affinity energy is this process right here is the addition of an electron to an atom right to form the anion if it gets more negative that just means that this process becomes more and more stable right in other words the anion is more stable than the atom right the more negative this value is for this process that means the more stable the anion is with respect to the atom. Okay, and I wrote that conclusion right there. Um, so across a period, basically what you see is that you see an, uh, a more exothermic value for electron affinity as you go from left to right. Now, can you explain this behavior based on your understanding of an interplay between the two factors that we talked about, which is Z effective and principal quantum number? Well, we already talked about it in the prior video that if you were to go from left to right, what happens? The n value stays constant, but then the z effective goes up, right, by quite a bit as you go from left to right. Now think about that. If my z effective goes up, that means that my electron in the valence shell is going to feel a stronger attraction to the nucleus. Why is that good for electron affinity? Because now what you're doing is you're just adding one more electron to your valence shell. The more uh, effect, effective nuclear charge or the stronger nuclear attraction the electron is feeling in the valence shell, by adding another electron, that makes it uh, the new electron is more accommodated in comparison to if the nuclear attraction is small. Okay, So this can be illustrated by the following picture. 
Here you have lithium and then fluorine, both appear two elements. And if you look at it, you have your purple electrons here, which is your 1s electrons. And then on the second level, you have your um, 2s electron for lithium. The electron affinity process basically means you're adding one more electron into your valence shell. Now, if you add it to lithium, you're going to have negative 60 kilojoules per mole uh, electron affinity value, okay? Now, if you were to do the same for fluorine, okay, in fluorine, you're already going to have here seven electrons existing, so you're adding the eighth electron. When you're adding the eighth electron, this electron is a lot more tolerated. The electron affinity value is actually around 340 or so kilojoules per mole. Why is it so much more stable adding that electron? Well, see, the big difference between the lithium and the fluorine atom is that lithium only has plus 3 as the nuclear charge. Fluorine has plus 9. If it's plus 9, that means that the Z effective for this new electron is going to be a lot bigger which means that that electron is more tolerated so that when you add it, you make this new interaction between the electron and the nucleus, and that's what results in all this energy being released, okay? Now, the second trend we want to look at is down a particular group. Take a look at, for example, group 1A elements, which starts from lithium, and then we go to sodium, and then we go to potassium, rubidium, and cesium, okay? So if you look at these points that I just made, you can see that they tend to trend downward. It's not a very dramatic effect, but you can see it. Same thing here with fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. It might be a little clearer to see with this one right here. Now, I know the fluorine kind of breaks the trend, but if you look carefully, you can kind of see that these things are going down, okay? Now, what does going down means in this case? Well, remember, the axis is a little funny here. You have negative 350 and then negative 300, negative 250. So in other words, the electron affinity becomes less exothermic as you go down a group. It's less and less stable to add that electron to the atom. And the question again is why? Well, we know how to answer this. When you go down a group, what happens is you have more shielding, right? So your valence electron is located right here, and valence electron is located right here. But if you compare these two structures here, these two elements, the bottom one, which is further down a group, has a lot more shielding than the top one. If you have a lot more shielding, then the Z effective will go up, but it's not going to go up by a big amount. However, the N value goes up by a huge amount, okay? So if you look at that energy, Z effective doesn't go up by a whole lot. However, this number goes up by a whole lot. So your energy becomes a lot less. Um, so when you're trying to add a new electron, which is the energy measured by electron affinity, that electron is not going to be tolerated very much because it's not going to be attracted to the nucleus very strongly because the nucleus is so far away from, from the new electron. And there's all this shielding that's blocking it from the uh, nucleus. Whereas if you're adding to something like this, it's still pretty easy to uh, interact with the nucleus. So as a result, the electron affinity is going to be more exothermic. So that's really the explanation for electron affinity and the trend that you observe there. Now, what I want you to be able to do, again, if you look through the homework, there will be a couple of questions that ask you about exceptions, okay? This is something you need to keep in mind. Again, they, we did this exceptions explanation in class for ionization energy. So you want to look back to this explanation and try to work through a couple of the homework problems that ask you about exceptions. Why would you see an exception, for example, in the electron affinity energy? If you look here, right, in our uh, uh, example here, you know, in, in this table right here, in this plot right here, you can see that there's a big difference, for example, between C and N. We're expecting it to go more exothermic, but it actually becomes less exothermic. Can you explain why? Uh, there is another difference between SI and P. So you got to think about the electron affinity process, process itself, which is this reaction, and you want to think about what is it that makes the C and N flip like that, or the SI and the P flip like that, okay? Something to think about um, at home, uh, also while you're doing your homework.